Shalom, everyone. I'm Brother Doug. I apologize to all of those that were expecting to see us on YouTube tonight. You guys might just have to uh, wait until you who are willing tomorrow or first day to see this study. So this is a re-recording a re and re-upload of Who is Wisdom. So we'll probably call this Who is Wisdom Final Cut. Um, so bear with me here. Let me just get my um, document up here. So I had to make some changes here. Um, there was a couple sources we used last time. If you guys saw what we did last time, um, I did not want to use anymore. Um, we used even, you know, um, the Mormon Bible last time at, at this time. So, so I'm a little bit more strict to actual scripture and not use outside sources that like that, that really can't be um, used as a primary proof or source to what we're going to present. So, um, okay. So who is wisdom divine feminine debunked? So just to explain what the divine feminine is, every pagan religion has a, a form of it. Um, because all of them have trinities, all of them have pantheons. So just to explain, um, the history of this goes all the way back to Babylon. Um, Nimrod, he dies. However, he dies, not really important. The point is he died. Um, his wife took over. His wife supposedly, according to lore and legend, was, I just found this out recently, would have actually been Cush's... Um, I'm trying to remember the actual story. It was either Cush was her husband and son or something like that. So it it would it would either I think it was either that or Cush was her or or Semiramis was the daughter of Cush, so she married her dad. Um so it was incestuous, and then when Cush died, she married Nimrod and so on and so forth. And um, but this incestuous trinity in the pagan religions go all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis. Semiramis became known as Ashtaroth, Astarte, Easter, um, Isis. Um, the list goes on. I mean, both of them had about like 70 different names after the Tower of Babel. So you have these two individuals, the whole world worships them. You see that in the book of Acts, it says, you know, this uh, Diana, okay is worshiped by the whole world it says okay so when we go when we're tackling this type of study guys we got to realize that this is nothing new this whole feminine divine stuff has is in every pagan religion around the world it just so happens the hebrews at some point in time the Abri people got into it as well and they started trying to incorporate this ashtoreth semiramis uh, as the wife of Yahuwah at one point because they started mixing Baal worship with Yahuwah worship mm -hmm. and they tricked themselves to believe that Baal was the same person as Yahuwah. Um, ergo, the wife of Baal became in their minds the wife of Yahuwah. So that's what we need to understand. And by the way, Christianity, you guys are the same way today, so don't try to point fingers. You guys are the same way. You have tricked yourselves into believing that Baal is Yahusha. You've done the same thing. You've done the same thing, whether knowingly or unknowingly. The, the Christian religion has done the same thing that the apostate Hebrews did. So, again, I would say, I would say you could say it's just as bad or even worse with the Christian religion because they were not in covenant with Yahuwah to begin with. But that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to first go to, I think, the book of Proverbs to build a foundation here. Um, we're also going to have some stuff from the New Testament. Don't worry, we'll be getting to the New Testament. Um, there will be a very little bit of, I wouldn't even call it apocryphal, I would more call it um, scripture plus commentary, extra sources. With the Targums, the Targums are legitimate scripture, though. They're not apocryphal. They're uh, According to certain sects of Yahudim out there, they would consider 
the Targums to be their their version of the Torah. So again, it is Torah, so that's why I'm including it. It is a version of of the um, the Aubrey scriptures, so that's why I'm including it. Um, so anyway, but we're going to start off with Proverbs 129. Mom, could you read your version for me? Sure. One and then verse yeah. 29. Yeah, okay. read, your, sure. read yours first. Sure. And then when I'm reading mine, I'll put mine up on the screen. So. Okay. Since they hated knowledge um, and did not choose to fear Yahuwah, that's what it said. That's the whole verse. Since they so, hated knowledge. Yeah, they did not choose the fear, right? Right. Okay, so. And for the, some reason, I have something written here. Yeah. After knowledge, I hand wrote this. We had to be the taught. The word. I, I wrote, yeah. no, after knowledge, I wrote, or wisdom. <laughs> Yeah, because the word of Yahuwah <laughs> is actually there in the Septuagint. I'm going to show you guys on the screen here. This is how the Masoretic started monkeying around. So it says here, for they hated wisdom and did not choose the word of Yahuwah. It's calling you the word of Yahuwah wisdom. So and this is the word of Yahuwah? Yes, the Mine Septuagint. Says, yeah. Choose to fear yeah. Yahuwah is what So says. they did not choose the word of Yahuwah, and I would say that that's showing you the word of Yahuwah is not just utterance, but a person. So mm -hmm. there, wisdom equals the word of Yahuwah, according to the Septuagint. Mm -hmm. So again, we're getting already a hint here who this person wisdom is. Okay, so now we're going to go to, and just to prove to you how I know that it's talking about Yahushua here, let's go to Revelations um, 19, mm -hmm. verse 13, I believe, and we'll see who is the word of Yahuwah, okay? So this is what I mean by line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay, so Revelations 19, 13, he is, who's the he here, right? So if we go up to, okay, verse 11, we'll even start at, I saw heaven opened. And suddenly there was a white horse, and he who sat on it was called trustworthy and true. And in righteousness he right rules and makes war. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and his head on his head are many crowns. It has a note here. Um, certain manuscript will say names written. Okay, so well, um, depending on your manuscript, it might say name or names written, which no one knows but he himself. He is clothed with a garment dipped in blood. Interesting. Other manuscripts say sprinkled. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of important because I would actually side with the sprinkled. That's a whole nother topic. But the reason I would side with sprinkled is because, you know, the whole Levitical priesthood and, you know, Yahushua being the high priest and blood sprinkled usually mm -hmm. had to do with sacrifices. So it's kind of interesting. His name is called his name is called the word of Elohim or the word of Yahuwah. So we see here, Revelations 19, 13 is calling Yahushua the word of Yahuwah. Proverbs 1, 29 in the Septuagint is calling wisdom the word of Yahuwah. So again, we can't have scripture contradict itself. This all has to be talking about the same person. So we can kind of uh, deduce right now that Yahushua seems to be the most popular candidate for this person. So let's go to um, Proverbs 825. Because this is going to be another one where you're going to see it a lot stronger. Oh, go ahead, brother, before we go there. Go ahead, brother Yahushua. It's interesting. The, um, the Western actually says soaked with blood. Hmm. Western Peshitta. Yeah, the uh, that may be because of the wine presses. Yeah, because Isaiah sixty three to their to their point would be Yahusha as Yahuwah on the day of Yahuwah, um, killing Edom, soaked in blood, knee deep in blood, is talking about no one was with me and all that. So since Isaiah sixty three seems to be a parallel account, I would actually agree with the Western Peshitta. It actually, it actually wouldn't. Uh, go back to the day of Yahuwah in Isaiah 63. So, yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. No, sprinkled makes sense too. 
Yeah, I wonder which manuscript says sprinkled. I would like to look into that after this. If it's the receptus or um go ahead, Mom. No, I was just reading what we're going to next. Oh, okay. So what okay. you want to look at specifically, um, I would start at verse 20, maybe, or 21 mm -hmm. of chapter 8, and then just read all the way down, and you'll see uh, some of the language that's being used there. You want me to read? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. all right. It's okay, all right. verse yeah, 20. Go ahead. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice bestowing wealth on those who love me and making their treasuries full. Yahuwah possessed me. Let me just see something here. Yeah. Yahuwah possessed yep, me. Yep, that's right. Or fashioned me, that is my footnote there. Oh, okay. At the beginning of his work, before his deeds of old, I was appointed huh. from eternity from the beginning before the world began. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs mm. abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. And then I have something next to there that there's a footnote that says, he begets me. Um, yeah, I was there when LXX. he set the heavens in place when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep. Um, how far did you want me to go? Yeah, I think we're there. Okay. Did you at least get to verse 31? No, not yet. Okay. When he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then... I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world. Okay, so you noticed anything in verse 30? Verse 30. Then I was the craftsman. Such a weird way they translate yeah, it. Yeah, at his side. And there's no footnote at all in that okay. verse. So the LXX in verse 30 says, I was by him, suiting myself to him. I was that wherein he took delight. Daily I rejoiced in his presence continually. Those of you that are familiar with the Brit Hadashah, you go to Matthew 3.17. It will word for word say the same thing when the dove is descending. It will say, this is my son. In whom I take delight, or in whom I have I take pleasure in. So the point here is that this person speaking is saying he is the only begotten son of Yahuwah, mm -hmm. if you pay closely attention to verse 30 there. So the person wisdom who is first person speaking here is saying, I was the one he took delight in. Mm -hmm. Yahuwah made me the beginning of his ways for his works. I hate how the NIV words mm -hmm, that one. Mm -hmm. I think the Masoretic tries to yeah. take away the co-creator part there in mm -hmm. verse 22. So I don't like that at all. Um, he establishes me before the time was right there. Okay. So who was with Yahuwah? Who is the only person with Yahuwah before the creation of the angels, before the creation of the earth? We all know who that was. Right. Okay. John 1.1. 1, 1. All right. Cross reference right there. It's very obvious who this is. Okay. So <clears throat> this is why I want to build a foundation because after this, we'll finally get into the whole verses in question where wisdom is supposedly being called a she in the English. So we're going to get into all that. But as you can see, it's very clear this is Yahusha here. As early as uh, verse 21, even. Um, what's interesting here, it says, if I declare to you the things that daily happen, I will remember. Hold on a second. Just went back to the previous chapter here. That I may divide substance to them that love me, may fill their treasuries with good things. If I declare to you the things that daily happen, I will remember also to recount the things of old. So that's kind of interesting. But then it goes into... I was with Yahuwah. I was the beginning of his ways for his works. 
rather than being the beginning of his works. So there's a there's a distinct difference. There's um, the Masoretic will have verse 22 make you think that it's a created being here mm -hmm. when it's not. It's saying he was the beginning for Yahuwah's works. Right. He was the tool, not the works itself. He was by the word he created, you know, John 1, 1. So, and we're going to get into the Targums too, showing how the Targums, the authors of the Targums understood who wisdom was. So again, this, this is, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept here. So, all right. I think that's about it. So we'll go to the next cross reference if there's nothing else here. Uh, right here. So um, let me go back to the document and see where we're at here. But anyone that's interested, I referenced Matthew 317 um, says the same thing about Yahushua is the one Yahuwah took delight in, matches up perfectly with Proverbs 830. Okay. Uh, what I would like to do now is just see if there's any other Tanakh references um, that we can go through. Okay. There's a couple here. Now, this is important. A lot of people want to say that the Ruach is a she and that the set apart spirit, which I would agree is set apart spirit is the person wisdom. I agree with that. But as far as it being a she, that's where I think people are in error. So I'm going to show you guys how it, they're half right about the set apart spirit being the person wisdom. But where they're lacking is, you know, um, thinking that it's feminine instead of masculine. Um, because if Yahusha is the spirit, you know, uh, Romans, I think, says it, you know, where the spirit of you, mm -hmm. spirit of Yahuwah is, there's freedom and all that. And how Paul even equates Yahuwah's spirit as the same spirit of Yahusha in many places. So um, we're going to go here and go to uh, Exodus 31, 3. Exodus 31, 3. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, Ma. Okay. Um, and I have filled no. him with the spirit of Alua, with ability and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. Okay. So what is what is the spirit that he was filled with? The spirit of Elohim? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So interestingly enough, in the Septuagint, instead of it saying the spirit of Elohim, it says, I have filled him with a divine spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge to invent in every work. So what it's saying here is that the Ruach HaKadosh is the spirit of wisdom. So mm -hmm. it's the same spirit. Um, okay. So if Yahusha is wisdom, and he and the father have one spirit. They don't have a, they don't have different ruachs because they're one entity. Okay, you have Yahusha then is the Ruach HaKadosh then by extension. Okay, and that's what we see here in Exodus 31.3. And I'm not talking about a trinity. I'm talking about one entity, one singular numerical entity. Okay, so I don't want people getting confused here. So the point is though, we're, we're immersed into one spirit. So you can't have the father and son having um, separate um, Ruach Kim, I guess it would be considered in Hebrew. You can't have the father having a different spirit from the son. Um, Deuteronomy 34, verse 9, the Masoretic text, surprisingly enough, says spirit of wisdom. So again, we have the spirit of Elohim being called the spirit of wisdom. Okay, Deuteronomy 34, 19. Nine oh, seven. nine, my bad. I don't know why I said 19. <laughs> Whoops, 34, verse 9. Okay. Huh. Yeah, the reason I picked the Masoretic here is because the Septuagint says knowledge, so people will argue that it's not the same thing or whatever. 
Um, so this is how the restored name King James reads. And Yahushua, son of Nun, was the full of the spirit of wisdom. For Masha had laid his hands upon him. The children of Yashrael hearkened unto him and did as Yahuwah commanded Masha. So again, we have the spirit of Elohim. The spirit of Yahuwah is the spirit of wisdom. Okay, mm -hmm. so... And again, the if if the spirit is a she, if it's separate from Yahuwah, how are you going to reconcile these verses? It's showing that this the, the that wisdom is the same person as the Father. It's the same spirit. So you can't. There's no way to have this extra female entity in heaven. Um, let's just see here. See here, see here. If there's any more for the spirit of wisdom, Exodus 28, verse 3 in the Septuagint says the spirit of wisdom. Um, Isaiah 11, 2 and will be caused to rest upon him the spirit of Yahuwah and a, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and reverence. That's something about Yahusha. So it's calling the Ruach Kadash the spirit of wisdom. That is resting upon Yahusha the Messiah. Okay. Um, and because, so this is, um, let me see here. I think we're up to the Brit Hadashah now. I think we might start with Luke. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to, we'll, we'll go to those, um, the strong concordance stuff at last thing. Okay. So what we'll do here first is go back up to here, up to here where we have all the, Brit Hadashah. Well, actually, no, let me let me go to the Targums. I actually didn't just bear with me, guys. Let me go to that real quick. If anyone has any comments, this would probably be the time. If anyone has anything to add while I'm trying to get my Targums here. Oh, okay. Um I don't remember where I put them. Oh, oh, you know what? Oh, okay, I know where they are. Backpack. That's right. Oh, I'm glad my photographic memory is good for yeah, something. Yeah, in once in a while. Yeah. All right. All right. So, what I'm going to do for you guys, I got them physically here. It will just be quicker to do it physically. Um. All right, so here's the Jerusalem Targum. So I'm going to be reading from Tovros. This is a fragmented Targum here, but I want to read from a couple of verses from Genesis about the creation here, because this kind of goes hand in hand to those that want to promote the heresy of the divine feminine and what they'll claim. Um, you know, they'll try to say that that uh, Yahuwah had a heavenly wife that helped him create mankind, or the Jewish Jewish people today will say Hashem had the angels in Genesis one twenty seven. So there's many different flavors to this to this heretical, um, un um, basically not correct view of the us in Genesis one twenty seven. So. First, I want to go to Genesis 1.1, and it reads as follows. In wisdom, and it has in parentheses here, um, the Aramaic would be, Bahakuma, Yahuwah created. So saying, in the person wisdom, in Yahusha, we could even say, Yahuwah created. So again, co-creator. Um, Genesis 1.27, according to the Jerusalem Targum, and the word of Yahuwah created man in his likeness. In the likeness of the presence of Yahuwah, he created him, male and female, or male and his yoke fellow, female, he created them. So that's just one of the Targums here that show that they they would have interpreted 
Genesis one Genesis one twenty seven as the Father and the Son creating mankind, not Yahuwah and some celestial wife or Yahuwah and angels. Um, and that that view again, the angel view, we're not even gonna go into that today, but the angel and Hashem or however you wanna, you know, phrase it, Yahuwah and the messengers, that didn't even happen until way after Messiah came to earth. That was not even a a thought they would have had. That 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 is a very modern interpretation. Same thing with you know the heavenly wife thing and all that. That would have been a modern um, heresy that they would have believed in, um, way 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 into the synagogue period. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show that to kind of give proof of um, what we believe here and what we believe the scriptures are very clear on saying here. So again, this the this is not a Christian interpretation. This is what most of the Aubrey people would have believed, you know, from the first to fourth centuries. This is what they would have believed about um, wisdom, who wisdom is. Um, let's see here. I think we have one last one from the Tanakh here. Proverbs 2, 6. Because Yahuwah gives wisdom and from his mouth knowledge and understanding. So what's interesting is that it says Yahuwah gives wisdom. And that's a similar phrasing, right? You know, Yahuwah also gave us something as well, right? Team. So, right. So it's pretty interesting here. Uh, interesting parallel I found a while ago here is um, Proverbs 2, 6. So it says here. For Yahuwah gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So now you go to John 3, 16. And this is what, also what Yahuwah gives in John 3, 16. For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave... His only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So again, he gave up his only begotten. He gives wisdom. So again, there's like a loose parallel there. Maybe not a direct parallel, but a pretty loose parallel there. So again, you're going to see like little hints here and there. All these hints that Yahusha is the same person as wisdom. So hold on to all those we built a foundation on before we get to the actual Hebrew and Greek of these verses in question that we're going to get to. So, because remember, scripture cannot contradict itself. So, mm -hmm. um, let me see here. So we also have John 1, 14, honorable mention. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his esteem the esteem as the only begotten of the Father, only begotten, meaning he's the only person begotten of the Father, full of favor and truth, meaning John 1, 14 must be the same person as Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30. John 1, 18, no man has seen the Father at any time. The only begotten Son, which was in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Okay, Proverbs three nineteen. by wisdom. Yahuwah found the earth. Okay. And honorable mention here by uh, my, my Ak here, Brother Yahusha, um, Luke 735. This is a tricky one. This is where I think one of the areas where some that hold to this divine feminine belief where they get confused because Luke 735 in your Greek New Testaments will say, She's justified by her children. So this, I think, is one of the places they'll go to. The problem is, is not all versions say that. Um, that's the issue. So now you're dealing with a manuscript issue here. Um, and let me just see here if I have any of the versions here. So this is a new device, guys, I just got recently. So I'm going to have to just read it to you off of my tablet here. Um, from the Aramaic here, Yahuwah willing all, uh, Yahuwah willing I'll be able to get it on there soon.
So it says here in the Lamsa Aramaic, it says, and yet wisdom is justified by all its works. Okay. Um, and you also Your, have the uh, Your screen is frozen. Oh, okay. Let me just take that off anyway, since I can't, I don't have that module on the device anyway. So, so it says here, um, Lamsa said, but um, wisdom is justified by all its works, as well with the Bowsher. Both are using different Aramaic manuscripts, but both say the same thing. And wisdom is declared righteous or justified by all its works. So again, it has nothing to do with wisdom being a she or female or having children. So, you know, even though we are the works of Yahuwah, we are the works of Yahusha, we are his, not her, his children. But as far as the her being there, that could be a Greek corruption is what I would say. That possibly uh, a Gnostic Greek co corruption. A lot of these modern Greek manuscripts that go supposedly back to the third century. Um, one of them is a forgery, but that's a whole nother, whole nother study for a whole nother day. Supposedly the Codex Sinat Sinaticus was never a legitimate manuscript. And that's one of the manuscripts that say her children. So again, there's a lot of skepticism there. There, there's a lot of, um, I, I, I would seriously like, um, if I were you guys, I would really like research into it and look into, you know, a lot of this stuff with the Greek New Testaments, you know, they're not perfect. So that's the thing is, you know, so when it's a manuscript issue, I would say, you know, go with the manuscript that has the least amount of bias. Um, so, you know. There, the Greeks definitely had a bias. They were Gnostics. They were in Alexandria. They, they worship. They were worshippers of the feminine divine Sophia in their in their religion. So you got to realize that too when you look at these Greek New Testaments. There are going to be areas where Gnosticism has been kind of inserted into scriptures, into certain verses, not the whole manuscript, but. In certain isolated verses, they try to creep their Gnostic theology into there. Uh, go ahead, brother. Um, just to add a witness to that, um, the uh, there are there's, uh, some fragments, uh, Greek fragments. The uh, I guess the NU text. Um, if you you go and you Google NU fragments, you can I'm sure you can find it. But um, they would say. Uh, Hakma is justified, or wisdom is justified by its um, uh, works or by its actions. Yeah. So and, uh, definitely. Um, uh, sorry, real quick. Um, the the fact that it's fragmented, you know, I I kind of lean towards the fact that that kind of points towards it being a little bit older, and you know, kind of um, you know, the fact that it only survived in fragments, you know, I think would uh definitely say something yeah yeah definitely just just the fact that um yeah usually fragmented means older usually i mean most people would assume that just like the the jerusalem targum that i used is extremely fragmented most scholars put this as one of the earlier older than the the uh ben uziel one so not all the there, time though. Oh, yeah, not we know time, that. But, yeah, not all the time. I'm not trying to say all the time, but a lot of the time it is because wear and tear, like just to explain to people how manuscripts work with the wear and tear. The the older it is, the easier you're gonna have omissions and wear and tear, the easier you're gonna have fragments. When it's newer, it's gonna be more complete because that's just kind of how it works with. The way the material that manuscripts are made out of are like that old parchment paper or, you know, what, what would it be called, mom? Like linen type of type of uh, material. Very, very, very like I, I think delicate. You, were, you were on it more with the parchment. Paper parchment. Yeah, yeah, parchment. So I believe, so yeah. parchment is a very delicate material. So it's going to after after wear and tear, you're going to have fragments. Um, you know, that's why the Dead Sea Scrolls, a lot of fragments. Um, so yeah, usually, you know, the problem with fragments is they're not complete. So that's why a lot of times they use the mo more modern ones, even with the Septuagint, we have older Septuagints out there, but they're very fragmented. 
So that's why, you know, they'll have, they'll use the um, Codex Vaticanus or the, the um, whatever Henry Sweet used uh, for the Sweets LXX or whatever, you know, all these translators, they, they have to use complete manuscripts to have a complete Tanakh. So with the Septuagint, it is the oldest source we have, but the Septuagints were given or we have access to are the complete ones only go back to like the third century. So that's kind of what happens with wear and tear with manuscripts. And so, you know, I'm not surprised that that would be the case. So whoever changed it in these modern Greek ones had an agenda, just like they have agendas with other verses in the book of Hebrews, where it says, instead of it saying Yahushua is altogether um, greater than the angels, it will say he became greater than the angels. So again, yeah. you, you have apotheosis, being promoted so there's there's certain things here and there that the gnostics when they got their hands on the new testament manuscripts of the of the greek copies that they started like messing around they started trying to put their own ideas into things um you know so you got to realize that too so again luke 735 is a tricky issue because you can only get that understanding of a divine feminine if you go with the most you know, one of the most like unreputable sources for that verse, like you would have to blindly trust with the, uh, the Greek New Testament alone and not look at any other sources. So, again, that's the problem. So there that one of the issues is that we haven't been able to look at a lot of these other sources for the longest time. So now now we have these Peshitas. Now we have the Hebrew Sephardic. New Testament. Now we have like all these different sources and we can see where the Greek modern manuscripts have kind of like they're trying to insert ideas that are not scriptural. So I'm just kind of fixing this old document. Guys, bear with me here because I don't want to be um, citing from something. I don't know whether it is scripture or not. So um, last time we we had a couple of apocryphal uh, or pseudepigraphal books that I won't be using this time. So um, let me see here. So I think the next one we have is Galatians 4, 6. So it says, And because you are sons, you who has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now this is very, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, not confrontational, but this is very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when it's... Um, Go ahead, brother. I'm getting tongue tied tonight. I think it would be true to link um, uh, oneness to Trinity, even though when I read that doc, it was for um, showing the uh, progression of people believing that Yahushua was Yahuwah, up in, uh, the progression from 100 AD to 300 AD when dualism started to be introduced and then eventually not dualism but um it, it went from them they went from believing oneness to um separating yahusha and then eventually introducing the the third party you know the uh, making the yahuwah's ruach be a third person um which you know considering that that happened from 100 to 300 that would have been definitely the time they were um, introducing uh, what Semiramis or um, you know the divine feminine, um, it's definitely definitely would give you some uh, some good historical aspect on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to look back for that video. Um, what what um, YouTube page that was from? Um, it's so a, um, it's actually a um it's actually a pdf um i'll link it in the uh in the chat all right cool yeah that would be very helpful so i think the word i was looking for is controversial so to some that don't believe in the oneness here this verse is very controversial because it says here if you look very closely it says because your sons you who has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father so <laughs> you know in a weird way it's saying that, okay, now now you have it saying the spirit of his son is entering us. Now we know that 
the Ruach HaKadosh is also Yahuwah's spirit. So again, we have one spirit, okay? The spirit of his son is causing us to cry out, Abba, Father, okay? Um, Romans 8, 14 to 16, um, so it says himself, okay? Uh, so let's look at that, Romans 8, 14 to 16. For as many as are led by the spirit of Yahuwah, are sons of Yahuwah. So now it's saying it's the Father's spirit. So again, you can't have it both ways. If if we're wrong in their separate entities, I'm just playing, you know, the game devil's advocate here. If if you can't have it both being the spirit of both, if they're different people. So obviously they're one person. So the, the only way to make sense out of it, um, and Paul not sound like a schizophrenic here, is that both of them are the same person. Okay. That's why it's saying it's the spirit of the son, then the same the spirit of the father. Okay. So for as many as are led by the spirit of Elohim are sons of Elohim. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. Now we just read in, uh, what was it? Galatians 4 6, he says, the spirit of the son makes you cry out, Abba, Father. Okay. This very spirit bears joint witness with our spirit that we are children of Yahuwah. So again, that makes it very clear. The Ruach HaKadosh has to be the same spirit that Yahusha has in him. Has to be. Um, okay, so Acts 5.32. And we are his witnesses of these things. And also the set-apart spirit. Whoops. I don't know why he keeps doing that with my... Um, Stylus pen it really pisses me off. I don't know why I did that. I was trying to go through here and I had to do that. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. And the set apart spirit whom Yahuwah gave to those obeying and believing him. Second Corinthians 3.17, Yahuwah is that spirit. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, it doesn't say that. It says curios, and they'll try to make, you know, the rationalizations that curios cannot be Yahuwah. If you actually look in the Septuagint, the majority of the time curios is used, it's used as a substitution for the Tetragrammaton. So if you actually look at proof of it, it's not always meaning just master, because those that don't believe in the oneness – They'll use the argument that curios just means master every time, which does not make any logical sense in certain contexts. Okay, so now Yahuwah is the spirit, and where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there's liberty. And we all, with an unveiled face viewing as in a mirror, the esteem of Yahuwah are transformed to the same image from esteem to esteem as from Yahuwah of spirits or Yahuwah of spirit. Again, interesting, it says. Yahuwah spirit, because that's a that's a title for the father from uh, Enoch. So that's kind of interesting. Paul gives you like a little uh, little reference from Enoch there. <clears throat> Ephesians four four to five, we've been immersed into one spirit. As he chose us in him before the foundation of the world predestination that we might be set apart and blameless before him in love having beforehand determined point us no. having beforehand determined point us out no for it um in in adopt for out for an adoption to the number of children by Yahushua Messiah for himself according to the due pleasure of his will. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. First Peter one eleven. Do you want to read, Mom? Sure. Yeah. Okay, um, 
trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Messiah in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Messiah and the esteems that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the good news to you by the set apart Ruach sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. Now, the first verse there, right in verse 11, which spirit it says that's in them? Oh. Trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Messiah. Christ says. Yeah, spirit, spirit of Yahushua, right? Mm -hmm. Who was speaking through the prophets in the Tanakh? The father, right? Mm -hmm. So it's calling the spirit of Messiah the, the set apart spirit. Mm, right. Romans 8, 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yahuwah dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Messiah, he is none of his. Again, another oneness verse. Okay. So the spirit of Yahusha is the spirit of Yahuwah. First Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit, one singular, are we all immersed into one body, whether we be Yahudim or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been made to drink into one spiritual drink. So again, we see here again and again and again, scripture keeps telling us one single spirit. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the part of the study that's going to get interesting here. And don't don't worry, guys, I'm going to give you some historical info about the throne of wisdom in Italy and all that and show you how this all goes back to the Vatican. OK. <clears throat> she and her has been added to the text by English translators. So in certain verses, um, she has been added. Proverbs chapter one, verse 20. OK, let's go here. Let's just make sure this is the correct. Reference before I go to the Strongs. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's going to say her there, okay, in the English. So, we're going to show you here how that's incorrect. If you go to the Strongs, it should not be there. And I really recommend people, like, um, as long as you don't have any convictions against watching something that's done by a Christian. There's a great documentary called um, The Day the Devil Disappeared. I really recommend it. It goes into this topic very deep historically. It shows you like what we're talking about, but it gives you proof. It gets, gives you like archaeological evidence and all that. So hmm. it's it's up to any, any viewers and listeners out there on YouTube or anywhere. Uh, if you guys want to, I can share that link. So this is where they claim in the Hebrew here that somehow her is part of the word voice here. Okay. Now, as far as I can tell, I'm not a Hebrew expert here. I only see the Hebrew word for voice. I do not see her there. Okay. That means that it is added by the translator. So it should just say wisdom cries without outside utters voice in the streets so she there would be no pronouns there pronouns sometimes are not going to be in the hebrew and greek text they're added mm -hmm. by the translator they think they're helping you because they're trying to give you a sentence structure the problem is is that they're guessing what pronoun mm -hmm. to use mm -hmm. whether it's he or she or her or his right you see what i'm saying but it's not in the text as you can see from the strongs here Uttereth is H5414. Mm. Voice is H6963. She and her are both added in verse 20 there. So again, you, you have actually two additions there to make people believe that there's this feminine aspect of wisdom. So that to me is very uh, misleading. Um, very, very misleading in my opinion. So, and this is why people have this deception and truly believe this is because there's a verse on 20 and we're going to go to more of them here. Um, 
there's a couple more here that so we already have two additions i'm going to keep track here we already have she and her added once both both of them added once in the same verse okay so let's go i think i think now it's going to be uh chapter three or two we're going to be going to uh let me just scroll all the way down no All right, so Proverbs 3, 16, and 18, Greek word ego, okay, being mistranslated as her. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you why I believe it is mistranslated. It should be he, uh, his, instead of her. Okay, um, if you look at this Greek word, it's actually a uh, masculine Primary masculine noun. So Proverbs three sixteen. Most Bibles are going to say she or her, because mm -hmm. almost all English translators have kept this tradition. So you're not going to see much difference. Uh, okay, so there you go. You got okay. It's actually in the Greek. My bad. Okay, it actually is. Okay, so. Oh, you know, it's there, but it's mistranslated as her, okay? So G1473, ego, I, me, my. This is a generic Greek word for possession, okay? Like, you know, first-person possession, okay? So when you look at this, first person, I, me, okay? There, there really is no indication that it's feminine. There's really no in, in um, indication it should be she there or her there. So again, you have people translating the Greek into the in the English and just being dishonest. I really believe that. I believe there's an agenda because why? If it's supposed to be her, it should be a, a feminine noun or something. There should be something indicating why it's her instead of his. Uh, so anyway, so I just wanted to show you guys that because i think that is pertinent to this so all right so that's okay let me go to the next one here apologize about this it keeps making me restart from the beginning of the document here uh let's go to verse chapter five verse six she is added again and i'm not it's going to take me too long to go back and forth in the shared screen here so I'm just going to look at it, make sure that it's correct. Um, any of you guys have my sword, blue letter Bible, any of that, you can see this for yourself. Um, so I would recommend you guys use some type of tool when testing this out for yourselves. Um, so let's see here. It says you should ponder the path of life. Okay. The word her here. Okay. Look in the Hebrew of this here. So there's actually no her there. There is ways and immovable. So again, she is not really there, it seems like. Because you have Magal, H4570, means entrenchment track, okay? And then you have H2416, which means living, alive, revival. It Okay, so this is where it gets tricky. It is a primary, Kahi, H2416, even the Masoretic guys, is primarily a masculine noun. It can be a, fe a feminine noun, but it's not a primary feminine noun. So the, the beginning, like the... You know what I mean by I mean the primary definition. It says it's a a masculine noun, so you don't get until like the very last two definitions here that say feminine. Mm. So again, that's to me that's dishonest. If you know this and you're a translator and you know about a strong concordance, it should be translated as his then, not hers. So it should have said, "Lest you should ponder the path of life, his ways." 
are immovable. That's what it would sh should say in Proverbs 5 or 6. So again, let me just change this and please forgive me, guys. Um, it's not actually added. What it is is she is mistranslated again. So this is usually what you're dealing with is an English mistranslation of a word or it's just added where it's not in the text at all. Um, the Breton's English translation of the Septuagint, not the Septuagint itself, but Breton's translation adds she four different times. And Masoretic text adds her. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so Proverbs 6, verse 8. So let's just see here. Okay, so we have here... He prepares... Notice there's a he there in the LXX. Yeah actually has a he there he prepares food for himself in the summer so how can wisdom be a he and a she at the same time you know you who is not an androgynous okay so and lays by abundant store and harvest or go by the go to the bee and learn how diligent here's where the she is okay so right after diligent here's the first she added how earnestly she is engaged into her work so again you have twice there and then in um, chapter 6, verse 8, um, part B, it says, whose labors and canes and private men use for help, she is desired. Again, that's added there. And uh, respected by all through the weak and body, she is advanced by honoring wisdom. So again, you have four she's that are added there. The ironic part is the beginning of the of this verse, though, calls wisdom a he that's the ironic part so again i can't say that this is like this can't be a mistake they got to be doing this on purpose because you can't be both a he and a she they're they're trying to you know and again that goes to a whole nother gnostic doctrine the whole androgynous nonsense the the, the gnostics and the kabbalists believe that the creator was androgynous and all that nonsense. Could that, I make a comment? Yeah. Actually, now mine says, yet yeah, it stores its provision. But if you go back to verse six, he's talking about the ant. He says, go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it mm -hmm. stores its provisions. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, 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 it's referring back to the, yeah. It the, like, yeah. see, the problem is, is that, is that, yeah, again, like, like it shows there, it's depending on the translator, what they're going to translate that Greek or Hebrew word as, whether it or mm -hmm. she or him, mm -hmm. that's the problem is the pronouns. Oh, okay. So it depends on what, what the translator wants to do. And, and that's the problem. A lot of the times it's like, that could be the manuscript too. It's very possible. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, usually it's the, english translator making their judgment call on what it should be for example in proverbs 8 verse 2 here she again is added in okay so like in the greek it would actually read upon so it would say here yeah is upon the high extremities in the midst and of the paths stands so what I mean is the she or the he there would be added in. It's not there. It's not there. It's not part of, of <clears throat> it's not in the Greek. So it's it's yeah. added in there. So the so really the original text would not even have a pronoun there. It would just mm -hmm. say, you know, is upon um is is high upon the extremities in the midst and of the paths stands. Yes. See, in the original languages, sometimes they never had pronouns yeah, in yeah, certain yeah, instances. Yeah. 
They would not have pronouns. They would not have he or her or she. That's added in by a translator. So mm -hmm. you got to be careful with that stuff. Um, so for by the gates of mighty ones is occupied and in the entrances sings, sings saying. So the she again in verse three is not there because I'm looking at the word right here. Hey, bro, it, I'm sorry. What verse were you at before eight and two? Um, I was at Proverbs six, verse eight. I was looking at how Brenton um added in like she, I think three or four different times, okay. um, which is not, yeah. Um, so yeah, so uh, yeah, basically we're trying to show here how she is like added in a lot. Um, sometimes there's no she or he in a verse, and it, it will not even have a pronoun at all. Um, so that. The translators think they're helping people because they're, you know, in the English, you got to have pronouns and whatever. Uh, you know, you're talking about language, uh, the sentence structure differences. So they're, they think they're helping people, but they're, they're now producing a new doctrine in there by putting she in there. Now, now you're making people think it's a feminine uh, being and all that. So, um, Proverbs 9 2 is the next one. It says, she is added in the Greek for, um, she is added in Greek word hate to is mistranslated as herself. So if we look at the ABP here, um, so we can see here the word herself. Um, yeah, it's actually just the word table. So herself is, I don't, let me see. Am I, oh no, my bad guys. So it's actually funny enough the Thayer show here that himself, it's a, it's a primary masculine noun, um, hey to. So in English, the transliteration is H E A U T O U. And in the in Strong's Greek, it would be G1438. The Thayer's definition says himself, then it says herself. So this is what I mean by when translators sometimes I really think know what they're doing and if any of them have a Thayer's or Strong's and they're ignoring that it's a primary masculine, secondary feminine, you're being dishonest. I'm just going to call it out like it is. You're 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 being extremely dishonest. Um, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 3, Greek word hey to, um, mistranslated as herself in verse 3. So let me see here. It says, and we also have a she that's added there as well in uh, verse 4. So let's see here. Apostello. Yeah, verse 3 has it added in there too, actually. G649 is apostello, and it's not showing any pronoun that would it be included here. So she should not be there in Proverbs 9, verse 3 at all. It should say sent her. Um, let's see here. Is there sent himself again? A2 is primarily masculine, sent himself his own servants, or maybe not himself. It would say sent his own servants, calling together with high proclamation upon a base insane. So we have the she added also A2 in the G1438 in Proverbs 9 3 is mistranslated as hers, hers, so rather than his. Can I uh share something real quick? Yeah. Um, I see what your mom was pointing to. Um, with Proverbs six, uh, eight. If you when you're starting in verse six all the way down to eight, um, whereas one version says you know where well, the Septuagint says he, but the Greek says she. Whether it's he or she, it seems to be pointing to the ant, not not um, uh, hakma, not wisdom. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which again, you know, obviously has to be allegorical because not all ants are female. So, you know, right. unless it's talking about a mother ant, maybe. And I don't, would, right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where I would say it's like a poetic feminine. I forget how um, a mentor of mine used to talk about how sometimes the Greek will use a feminine in a poetic sense or allegorical sense. 
So that seems to be what's happening there if it's talking about the ant, because I don't think it would make sense. But, uh, like the ants, uh, obviously you have male ants, female ants, and all that. You have female bees, male bees. Mm -hmm. So it would not make sense for it to of all of them to be female. So that that has to be like a. It's either talking about like the the mother ant, or if it's physical, or it has to. Be I wonder about if the not. female ants, um, if they gather, if it's only the male ants. Yeah, I wonder. I know the female lions do the gathering or the hunting. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same with the insects that the females do it. I wouldn't be surprised because I think we're the only type of creature where the men do the hunting, supposedly. Yeah, so yeah. they're they're um a lot of the uh animal kingdom, the women do a lot of the work. So that yeah, that that's the first thing I learned about the lions was yeah. that the lioness, you know, she has the babies. She has them attached to her, feeding on her. And actually, the, the main job of the father is to keep safety to the, to the pride. And that's what he mainly does is fight off any kind of um, intruders or problems. But, you know, she's just had these babies. Now she's got to go running off and find food. It's really something. I remember being yeah. a little surprised about all that. But honestly, I know that it's true because I've seen scripture mm -hmm. where it says the lioness mm -hmm. finds her prey, you know, and all of that. So yeah, yep. it's very interesting, the whole setup. Yep. Yep. Very true. So we only have one more cross reference. It will be pretty much done for the night with the scriptures. Um, so we have Proverbs 9, verse 14. So the same chapter mm -hmm. here. Um, where you look at the beginning of the verse, it says it has she there sits at the doors. Mm -hmm. If you click on the actual strongs here, the she is not there in the Greek. So it would just say sits at the doors. So we have um this is the Greek word ka thizo. G2523 to make sit down, to set a point to confer a kingdom on one. To have fixed one's abode, there's no mention of of uh, pronoun mm -hmm. at all in that definition. So that that is completely um, what is the word I'm looking for? That is, you know, really not not being honest with the text right, there. Right, right. Um, and then you have it saying of her own house. I don't think hers there either. Oh no, it's supposed to be his. Okay, so again, you got the hey to there. It's supposed to say his own house. Because hmm. himself is the prior definition. Yeah, yeah. So wow. That's so crazy. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. So this th this is the reason why people think the the mm -hmm. um wisdom is a she is because you got all these additions, mistranslations of these verses, and when you add all that together, if you didn't have all those mistranslations and additions. I don't think anyone would even have this doctrine or very few people would have this doctrine, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you would have to really have to eisegetically put it into the text at that point. Um, you know, Genesis, I get some people get it from the whole, you know, misunderstanding that he made um, man and women in his image. But it actually says he made man yeah. in his image, meaning men in his image. So the the and Paul says this very clearly in the New Testament. So um, Paul will say that woman is the esteem of man. Man meaning males are the esteem of Yahuwah of Yahusha. So mm -hmm. women were made in the image of man. Right. So that that's where the confusion comes from. So again, that's that's the problem. Is that you get confused with the whole Genesis thing thing. And then, and then, and then you get into the whole, like I said, the whole, you know, androgynous idea from the Kabbalists and the Gnostics, they believe in androgyny and all that. So you got to understand too, where that deception comes from. So to think that you, who has a feminine side, it's something that the Kabbalists would want to believe and promote as well, as well as the Gnostics. Well, the Gnostics don't even believe in Yahuwah, by the way. Those Gnostics that want to make all these videos online, like 
Ashtoreth is the is the wife of Yahuwah, supposedly. It's ironic because they don't worship Yahuwah. It's like why you know, it doesn't even make sense. They they don't even worship Yahuwah. So the the whole but that whole doctrine goes back to the Gnostics that Yahuwah has a celestial wife and this and that. And um there's even proofs of um I got to find the link for it. I found the link like a couple months ago. Um, Joseph Smith, he was proven to be a Gnostic. There's a Gnosis website mm -hmm. that literally claims that he was one of them. So I'll try to find that for you guys. Uh, go ahead, bro. No celestial life, so no collab? Planet collab? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Islam, there's no 100 virgins. I'm telling you, it's weird, mm. all the Gnostic... It, it, there's there i think there is some gnosticism involved with the islam creation as well because it's too it's too um what's the word i'm looking for it's too much of a coincidence mm -hmm. that islam has a similar thing with that with mormonism and all that there mm -hmm. there has to be uh what's the word i'm looking for there has to be a Correlation. Correlation. Um, something about the foundation um of it. Let me just see if I can look this up. Um Joseph Smith. Using my opera browser here. So Joseph Smith was a Gnostic. Stupid thing. Was a Gnostic. And really, where you get into all these like heavenly wife belief systems, it always goes back to Gnosticism. It always goes back to that. Okay. Well, here we go. Joseph Smith and Kabbalah, the occult connection. Gnosis.org. This is a Gnostic website. Hmm. So, this is the website I found a while ago. It talks about how Joseph Smith was a lot of his teachings you can find in the Kabbalah and all that. Okay, so again, this guy supposedly found a Christian church, yet he was Kabbalistic, and his teachings were Kabbalistic and Gnostic. So I, I really recommend people that still are not convinced take a, a good read of this article because this is a lot, a lot of the places where we see this doctrine being, being promoted. In, especially in Christianity, is really one of the main denominations is uh, the Latter Day Saints movement. So, one one of the biggest, I would say, one of the biggest, um, you know, denominations that teach that. So, this guy uh, definitely, definitely had some occult ties. And so, let me just see here if I can find. Uh, go ahead, bro. I'm I'm gonna try to. On the old hand. Okay. Um, I want to find for you guys too and put it on the screen here, the throne of wisdom. And that's it. That's another historical thing here. So again, people might be saying it's a reach to say the Catholic Church is involved, but I'm going to show you here that they are definitely involved with this. And they would intentionally want people to think the spirit is feminine. Oh, yeah. Okay, Seat sure. of Wisdom. It's called the Seat of Wisdom. It's in a monastery, I believe. Um, I'll show you guys on the screen here what it looks like. But basically, it's the Madonna and Child, typical Madonna and Child, you know, Semiramis Tammuz. Okay, uh, get it on the screen here. Okay. Seat of Wisdom. Yep. Latin Sedis Sapiente is one of the many devotional titles for Mary in the Roman Catholic tradition. Mary is seated on a throne with the Christ child on her lap for more domestic. Da, 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 da. So it's called, and they're admitting that it's, it's devotion to Mary. It honors Mary, seat of wisdom. So, again, guys, this is the whole agenda here so that she gets the worship, so that she gets the worship. And by extension, if she gets the worship, Yahuwah can't get the worship. The devil gets the worship. 
That's the whole agenda here. Notice what she's sitting on, a footstool. So this is blasphemous. This is her replacing you who on the throne, replacing you who's on a throne, and has the, the flat earth with pillars under her feet. Mm. That is one of the most blasphemous things I've ever seen in my life. And they're trying to portray her as the person wisdom there. So again, this is where that spirit of the divine feminine comes from and goes back to them, the Vatican, and goes back to Babylon. So, and again, if you guys are interested, feel free to reach out. I can try to give you guys some more information, but I really, really strongly recommend you go to these two links that I showed you guys. Also, also, I strongly recommend if you have not seen it, watch the day the devil the day the devil disappeared. It will show you how this whole feminine goddess nonsense goes right back to the devil. Anyway, so hopefully this was a baraka to you guys. Shabbat shalom, our brothers and sisters, and Yahuwah and Yahusha. And Layla Tube, Shabbat shalom, guys. <laughs>